The title of the first Chinese emperor is often attributed to Qin Shi Huang, who became the first emperor of a unified China after the Qin dynasty's establishment in 221 BCE. In the ensuing centuries, it is estimated that there were around 559 emperors in China, from the earliest dynasties to the end of the Qing dynasty in 1912. This number includes emperors from various dynasties, both major and minor, and takes into account changes in rulership due to usurpations, abdications, and other historical factors. Throughout those centuries, the emperor of China was often considered to have a divine or semi-divine status. The emperor's authority was often associated with the idea of the mandate of heaven, which was a philosophical and political concept used to justify the rule of the emperor. This is the story of the last emperor, Aising Joropuyi. Puyi's tale spans the fall of the Qing dynasty, the rise of the Republic of China, and the dramatic transformation of the Chinese political landscape in the 20th century as it became a communist dictatorship. Born on February 7, 1906, Puyi ascended to the throne at the tender age of two, making him the twelfth and final ruler of the Qing dynasty. The Qing dynasty spanning from 1644 to 1912 was characterized by its powerful rulers, territorial expansions, and a blend of traditional Chinese culture with influences from the ruling ethnic group, the Manchus. The dynasty was founded by the Aisen Jioro clan, led by Emperor Nurhaci, who successfully overthrew the Ming dynasty in 1644. The Qing dynasty was unique in that it was ruled by the Manchus, a non-Han Chinese ethnic group. Despite this, the rulers sought to integrate with Chinese culture to legitimize their rule. The Manchu people are an ethnic group native to northeastern China and Inner Mongolia. The Manchu language, also known as Manchu, belongs to the Altaic language family, which is different from the Sino-Tibetan language family, to which Chinese, including Mandarin, belongs. The Qing emperors adopted Confucian principles, the Chinese bureaucratic system, and maintained the civil service examination system. This cultural assimilation helped to stabilize the dynasty and facilitate the governance of the vast and diverse Chinese empire. Under the Qing dynasty, China experienced significant territorial expansion. The empire reached its zenith during the reign of Kangxi, 1661 to 1722, one of the longest reigning emperors. Kangxi's military campaigns expanded Chinese borders, reaching into Central Asia, Tibet, and Mongolia. The Qing also incorporated Taiwan into their domain and secured China's northern and western frontiers through treaties and military victories. The reign of Emperor Qianlong, 1735-1796, is often referred to as a high point in terms of wealth and influence. The economy thrived through trade, and the empire became a major player in the global market. The arts and literature flourished during this time, with notable achievements in painting, calligraphy, and poetry. Despite periods of prosperity, the Qing dynasty faced internal and external challenges that contributed to its decline. Corruption within the bureaucratic system, population growth, and economic strain led to social unrest. Additionally, external pressures from Western powers, such as the Opium Wars in the 19th century, exposed the weaknesses of the Chinese military and highlighted the need for modernization. The 19th and early 20th centuries marked a tumultuous period for the Qing dynasty. Internal rebellions arose, including the Taiping Rebellion and the Boxer Rebellion, which weakened the central government. Simultaneously, Western powers in Japan encroached upon Chinese territory and influence. By the time Puyi was born, the Qing dynasty was nearing its end. His early life was nonetheless marked by the opulence and tradition of the imperial court. His uncle, the Guangxu Emperor, had attempted to modernize China through the Hundred Days Reform, but his efforts faced staunch opposition. 
When Emperor Guangxu died in 1908 under mysterious circumstances, Puyi, a toddler at the time, was named his successor. He was a child of history. The end of the Qing dynasty was imminent as revolutionary forces gained momentum, demanding political change and the establishment of a republic. In 1912, at the age of six, Puyi abdicated the throne, marking the formal end of imperial rule in China. The Republic of China was established, and Puyi found himself no longer the emperor, but a young boy facing a world in upheaval, surrounded by the past. Following his abdication, he continued to reside within the Forbidden City for some years. The Forbidden City is a large palatial complex located in the heart of Beijing. It served as the imperial palace for Chinese emperors for almost 500 years, from the Ming Dynasty, 1368 to 1644, to the end of the Qing. Outside its walls, the political landscape shifted rapidly and the imperial era came to a close even as the former emperor lived lavishly within the walls of the Forbidden City. In 1917, the warlord Zhang Shun attempted to restore Pui to the throne in what became known as the Manchu Restoration. However, this restoration was short-lived, lasting only a couple of weeks. Pui was once again forced to relinquish any claim to the throne. His fate was to be very different. He was initially imprisoned in Fushun War Criminals Management Center in Fushun, Liaoning, China. He was incarcerated there for 10 years for his collaboration with the Japanese and was re-educated by the Chinese communists. The communists were ruthless in administering their ideology onto the nation and all perceived enemies, including Puyi. Over the course of Mao's rule, millions perished. Somehow Puyi survived and was, in fact, released in 1959. Afterwards, he lived a relatively quiet life in Beijing. He was allowed to return to the city, where he took on a simple and low-profile lifestyle. During this period, the one-time emperor worked as a gardener in the Beijing Botanical Garden. Puyi's experiences during this period were captured in his autobiography, From Emperor to Citizen. The book provides a first-hand account of his life, shedding light on the complex and often contradictory nature of his existence. The title itself reflects the profound transformation Puyi underwent, from the divine ruler of an empire to an ordinary citizen of the New People's Republic of China under Mao Zedong. Puyi lived through a remarkable span of history witnessing the fall of the Qing dynasty and the imperial tradition of China, the establishment of the Republic of China, the Japanese occupation, the demise of Japanese imperialism and the rise of communist rule under Mao. His life was shaped by political upheavals, external forces and personal challenges. He went from having the mandate of heaven to being a simple gardener in Beijing. Perhaps he found peace in his later years, Puyi was diagnosed with kidney cancer, and despite medical treatment, he passed away on October 17, 1967, at the age of 61. In post-war China, Puyi's life became a subject of scrutiny, debate, and reflection. While some viewed him with sympathy, acknowledging the complexities of his situation, others criticized him for his collaboration with the Japanese and his role as a puppet emperor. The 20th century ended the royal tradition in a number of nations, such as the Tsar of Russia and the Kaiser in Germany. China's imperial dynasties had lasted over two millennia up to Puyi's abdication and the creation of the Chinese Republic. This was a seismic change in Chinese culture, philosophy, and values. Puyi, once a symbol of divine authority, survived the transition to simple working man. The seeds of the gardener grew from within an emperor. Perhaps in the end, he found some peace of mind. History never ends. Thanks for watching.